Welcome back to All32. This your boy Jamal. Um, we got a short show for you, but I'm glad that week one's back because we got a lot of well, a lot of interesting things to talk about. So um with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. I got my boy Rod Dog with me, uh Montel Alama, uh, and then Nose Nostradamus. So how y'all feeling tonight? Y'all good? Hold up, bro. It would be not about that. <laughs> not about the disrespect. That's it. Not I didn't even. What did, what did I? What did I say that was disrespectful? All right, say less, bro. <laughs> do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to describe what the name? Where the name came from? It came from a foolish dude with has his nickname of SBM. Uh, well, oh my. <laughs> Well, what is so what you want? You want to explain SBM? How do you want to do that? I mean, if you if you explain uh, No Shadamas first, like why do people call you No Shadamas? I, I don't know. know. You don't know. <laughs> oh, what'd you say, Marcel? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's like, no. Let's get to the show. <laughs> so we just gonna act like you ain't say that, huh? I heard what he said. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, what's funny what's is up? though. Oh, your John ain't small. <laughs> you said what? Yeah. Oh, God, terrible. Oh, God, terrible. I hope we ain't got no viewers under 13 years old in here, man. All I know is. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm not not too happy about this past Sunday, but you know, it's always next week. You know. Yeah, that's that's the, uh, the optimistic way to look at it as a fan of the Titans. Um, so, I found yeah. a way I can look at it, baby. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, hey, it's only week one, bro. Right? Y'all got a whole season yeah, to get back. That's what he just said too. That's what he just said. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, just overall thoughts, man. Monta, I'll let you. Matter of fact, I'll let you go last. Uh, hour after Nick. Uh, Nick, what, what do you feel about the, the NFC East games and how your how your boys play Sunday night? Oh man, oh, man. Ugly. Let me tell you something. I knew it was gonna happen all along. You know what I'm saying? I knew all this was gonna happen. It's funny. Is I knew the Redskins couldn't block the uh, Eagles front seven. I knew that already. And I also knew. That the Giants can block us, so so we was good. I'm um, happy for my bowl points. We left a lot of points on the field, of course. Uh, first game did us, but we straight though, man. I feel sorry for the rest of the rest of the division, man. Uh, good luck to y'all teams uh, in the near future, but uh, it ain't nothing good for y'all. All right. How you feel about your boys uh, coming back? Uh, Are you eligible to play in there all sixteen? Really? <clears throat> all eighteen tomorrow. All 16, y'all not, 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 you know what, all 17, I'll give you that one. One more game. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, I knew it was going to happen all along, man. You know what I'm saying? God ain't going to let my boy miss the whole season. You know what I'm saying? The devil tried to hold him down, but he came back. Had a hundred on the ground, a couple in the ass. So, yeah, all right. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of the boy. He came out. <laughs> He gonna play for his freedom like Kobe did back in the day. So we all right, baby. You good. He's gonna ball out this season. Okay, sir. Um, thank you for your input. <laughs> thank you for your input. Um no so problem, let's, baby. let's go to the guy who drafted uh Zeke Zeke the Freak number one overall in our fantasy league, man. Uh Montel Jama. How, <laughs> how you feeling about this weekend's games, the NFC East uh division? And I think it was a sloppy weekend all around in the NFL, not just in the NFC East, but in the NFL, even with the Dallas Cowboys, uh, who got the W, but Dak wasn't accurate. Zeke looked good. Um, that's what the Cowboys do. They run the ball well. So I wasn't surprised to see that. Eli Manning was was Eli Manning. And <laughs> Carson Wentz, <laughs> Carson Wentz showed up, and he looks like a future star. I mean, a lot of people, I, I, I hate to see it, but he, he really did look like a star on Sunday, and, and the Redskins' offense was stagnant. Oh, man. And it, it was it was just a disappointing loss overall. Um, but for people who 
who continuously say we couldn't block their front seven. That's not necessarily true. I feel like we didn't have a great game offensively on the O-line, but there were times where the Eagles were just sending heat, and Kurt was inaccurate. And if you want to beat pressure, what you got to do is be accurate in the short game. You got to be able to beat it to back those guys up. So they just kept sending heat. They sent heat damn near the entire game. So I don't put it on the O-line. I think Kurt has to step up. But as I stated earlier before the show, man, we staring one and three at 4 right in the face. And I, people always say, you know, it's, it's, oh, it's only week one, it's only week one. I've seen week one come back and hunt people at the end of the season. You can't – that was a winnable game. You got to go out there and try to win it. You got to prep and you got to play and you got to win. So it, it is just week one, but that, that's a that's a painful loss right there. Yeah, most down. Every game count, bro. <laughs> Every single one. Ron, how you feel about the, uh, the NFC East, man? Uh, I'm going to start out with uh, Dallas. And then I'm gonna go on to the Ravens game, but right. yeah. Quick question too, uh, before, why you why you answered? Did you think? Because I mean, this is probably obvious, but we'll ask it anyway since uh, Nostradamus asked. Do you think that Odell played a huge factor in uh, the Giants' loss? And also, he also wanted to be paid. I think one of the, I think a damn near like a quarterback, if I'm not mistaken. So he um, wanted to be the highest he, paid player in the league. Yeah, highest paid player in the league. Did he prove his worth with the way the Giants performed? On uh, Sunday night, so Ryan. Oh, I, I think I think without a shadow of a doubt that proves that proved tremendously because Eli wasn't even throwing the pass. I was in the group chat talking to you guys, so y'all know how I feel about it. Eli wasn't even throwing the pass over thirteen yards last night or, or Monday night. Was it was it Sunday night? Monday night. Sunday night. Sunday night, sir. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't throwing the pass over thirteen yards, and it was almost like he forgot Brandon Marshall was even in a lead receiver on the other side of the field. It was like he. I don't, it was just like he forgot completely how to play the quarterback position. Like he looked uncomfortable. It looked like he didn't really know how to go through all of his reads. It was check downs. It, it looked it looked bad. I mean, it looked like regular Eli. You know what I mean? Without Odell Beckham being out there. Did, did anybody else want to comment before I move on to the topic? I'm not sure exactly how you wanted to do that, Mom. Um, Nick, how do, how do you feel about the, the Odell and Montel? How do you feel about the Odell too? Odell situation. It don't matter. One of y'all can take it. I'm about to say, I'm about to just go ahead and knock yeah. it out. Honestly, I felt like if Odell played yesterday, we probably still won. Um, of but course. I mean, that's easy way, to, to say, though. Right. The way the – I ain't gonna lie. Last year. You're right. They did beat us twice. A rookie quarterback, whatever. But look, though. Y'all yeah, still – come on. Don't give me that rookie. Y'all must have been last year. I'm going to say, and Dak looked rookie. much worse on Sunday than he did any point right. last year. Dak looked all right to me. Oh, you tripping. That that, that 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 was all right. He didn't look bad to me. He didn't like, have a great game at all. No, nah, he didn't have a great game, but that that's just a testament to what I was getting ready to get to before Ma asked the question. But they just played Dallas Cowboy football. Like how they won all them games last year was just just oh. just a, a complete game of the same. Like they just controlled the clock. The defense didn't have to make too many plays. Like it ran the ball 25, 26 times or something close to that. I mean. They just they play the same recipe. I mean, they look yeah. good. It's, they, they still look like, you know, they could possibly be that, that 12, 13 win team. Like, I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe the schedule gets a little tougher down the line, which I think it does. But I think they the same old machine. I, even I even if the is only catching like two passes, they were still out there, you know. I agree yeah. with that 100%. But when you got Odell, o- Odell Beckham on the field, your offense doesn't not cross the 35 yard line. All right, I got a question now. I got a question now. Y'all, can y'all name anybody on our defense line? You said defense you know, you know, can we? We supposed to have it. You know, we can yeah. name people on there. Yeah, Demarcus Lawrence is one. Charles Tapper. <laughs> Bro, <Bruh, laughs> talk about Charles and David Irvin. Uh, Irvin. First of all, Ryan. Only reason you know about Charles Tapper is because of the game. Nah, I mean, I'm, I'm a, first of all, I know what school he went to and all that. So you know, there you go, there you go, Oklahoma. Thank you. He, I feel like you just—I feel like you just heard all this during the game, though. Like, I nah, I'm just, I'm just in my book. You know what I'm saying? All right, so that's how I know you lying because you brought up that book thing. I know you. Lying, but it's, cool. It's, cool. it's cool though. But um, honestly, bro, like the way we was getting pressure, bro, I know, I know who we got on the on the front line, bro. If they was getting pressure like that, the Giants stand for a long. Was y'all really season. getting a lot of pressure though? What? 
I feel like Eli was just getting rid of the ball real. I'm t- I, I watched that game. It wasn't I like the, I watched the whole game. Major too. pressure. That's what I'm telling you. If, if Odell is in a game, one, he's such a threat. He's freeing up other guys to get open. He may even open up the run game. He's really that much of a weapon. You can't nah, say he's he not. He's not, he not gonna open up the run game because he ain't gonna put up last year. First of all, their run game is non-existent. They didn't have. I mean, they got Perkins. I don't even think their running back position is really that good. Their offensive line is just not good. Bro. Their offensive line is terrible. I'm not. I'm about to say like regardless. Terrible. Then you got an old Eli under under pressure. He barely good without pressure. So I'm like, what y'all want him to do, bro? It was just. It's gonna look bad this season for them. Like I feel sorry. I feel sorry for their defense because their defense is too good for them to be some trash. They gonna have to hold them in every game. I mean, well, like, technically we're last year that's, that same now. thing happened because uh, yeah, yeah, the defense, the defense won them like what they they had eleven wins. They won them about eight or nine. About eleven. About eleven. You're right. <laughs> hey, Ma, quick question. Yeah, I, what's up? What um, how many sacks did did uh, Brandon Graham finish with? I guess you're. I no, 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 no funny. I'm, I'm being for real. Uh, I don't think he had a sack. You know, nah, he definitely had a sack. I seen that myself. Well, I mean, I can check. Um, I know a lot of people had sacks. I think they. That's what I was about to like, say. We <laughs> gave up like four sacks. How but, was? Um, I mean, because the reason why I'm asking because um, Mont- because I'm I was listening to the point that Montel was making about you know there was some oh people my making goodness. comments. Oh, he had two. I thought I saw three and a half, but that's tackle for losses. He had two sacks. Okay, because I I was listening to Montel. Cause I didn't really get the chance to watch the whole game while it was live. I seen um, some of the replay of it, but I didn't really get a chance to see the whole game. And my uh, brother was saying that Moses wasn't looking too good on the other side. He looked so terrible. Saying, he looked terrible. He did. Yeah, oh. and they they're saying that he's dealing with an injury, um, which I mean it, it would explain some things because he was looking like this in preseason. But at the same time, if you know he's hurt, and why you know he ain't looking good. Why the hell is he still in the game knowing that Ty Sack is one of the best backups in the league? It, okay. it just doesn't make sense. So at the same time, though, Brandon Graham is is a, is a beast. Though. Yeah, six and a half sacks last beat, year. If so he get beat, by I better say he's a beast, bro. No, he's not, bro. Stop it. I'm solid, bro. He's solid. He's solid. Bro. That's fair. He's not a beast. Oh, he's, he, he looked no, like I'm a beast on, Saturday, on Sunday. Yeah, of course, because he was going up against Morgan Moses. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all was just praising Morgan Moses, bro. You ain't hear what Morgan I just Moses said? Is good. He's, yeah, he's, he's good. He's, I mean, he's playing hurt. That's all I said. That's all I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, we uh, Morgan Moses was hurt, Ryan, um, and he was not looking good. So your brother oh, okay. was correct. So I, I, I didn't get to see the whole game either, like I told you. And matter of fact, I got to rewatch it before the week before the week is over. But um, I was at the flag football game. Y'all know what's going on with that situation. But uh, yeah, so. I didn't get to see the first half. Most of the first half. And the answer, Brian, the reason I ain't know Brandon Graham even had a sack, bro, because it looked like 12 dudes was on Kirk Cousin. (laughs) I I didn't know who got the sack. They was throwing the sink, bro? They was throwing the kitchen sink, bro. The kitchen sink. I'm not lying. They was sending heat. All right, well, I mean, for me personally, I, I do think, I think Odell earned his money. It's too early to say, but I, for the for the most part, like he he showed his worth for the Giants is what I should say. I don't know how many games he's gonna miss. I hope he comes back soon because he's on my fantasy. Nah, team. they definitely he's on my fantasy team too. You know, I had to check. They say he's playing next week. Well, I hope so, and I need him to get like two hundred yards and a couple touchdowns because I just got my ass whooped. Um, week one, <laughs> and I'm not rocking. If I get my ass whooped again, it's gonna be some hell breaking loose. I don't know what I gotta do to cheat, but I will find a way. <laughs> I told y'all to go look at a uh, Colin Cowherd segment on Eli's numbers without uh, Odell Beckham. They I look completely even, different. I'm about to say I don't even have to look. I, I know that without even looking at statistics. Um. So yeah, I mean personally, I, I I do think he earned his. I do think he earned his worth. In terms of the Washington Redskins, I mean I understand what you're saying, Montel. Like it's it's very easy that they can go zero zero and four or one and three. Um, and a lot of fans feel that way off this first loss. And I told you how I feel about the Rams game, 51-49 chance. I feel like we can win it. Um, but at the same time, point being, it's very close because uh, you just don't know what this offense is going to do uh, against the Rams, who has a, a very good defense and a very good de- defensive coordinator. I, it's, it's tough, honestly, um, because you just, you just really just don't know about their immediate future. Not even just talking about the Rams, you just don't know because the way they the, point, the way they performed against the Eagles, uh, third downs was still a problem defensively. 
yeah. even though they look better as a unit, they look faster and they were better in the trenches. Um, so they still can't get off the field on third down. And that was more so missed opportunities and mistakes made. Um, they, they had, they had opportunities to, to close out drives and they just simply can't bring Carson Wentz down. So I think they just need to capitalize on their their opportunities because the defense coordinator is putting them in great positions. Uh, you can see it like the first touchdown to Nelson Aguilar, it, two opportunities to, to to bring down Carson Wentz and he he eludes both of them, both defenders. I was touchdown. crazy, bro. I yeah, crazy. I saw it. I seen I saw, that John in the casino. I was like, bro, this John lit. <laughs> yeah, bro. I was. I mean, I was. I wasn't too mad because I I saw I heard the score before I saw the score. So I was like, how the hell does that shit happen? But anyway, point is, man, it's it is it is rough for the immediate future. But I mean, we'll see what's going on. We'll get to the picks later, later, later in the show. Um, probably about 10, 15 minutes. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the week one surprises. Um, it doesn't matter, player, team, or coach related. Um, what what surprised you? You don't have to pick all three. Just pick one, so we keep it moving. <laughs> but uh, which which uh surprised you the most uh, coming out of week one? Uh, Ryan, you can take the helm on this one. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars kind of surprised me, opening out the gates. Ooh! Uh, I'm gonna let you put a round of applause on this, man. <laughs> only, only, only for the sole reason. I'm not surprised they won. I'm surprised how they won. Um, given the fact that they beat them 29 to seven, I believe, because Houston um, brought back the same defense and brought back JJ Watt, and they, they, they were the number one defense, like well, number one, number two, something like that. Last year, without J.J. Watt, and you add him back to the defense, and you would think they would be that much better. But Jacksonville put up uh, almost 30 points on them, and uh, definitely, definitely was a surprise to me. So, uh, Nick, what's up that. with you? Even man? though they lost oh, Allen Robinson for the season. Oh yeah, that's I, that sucks, bro. I had to throw that in there. That's lit. All right, lit. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, the asshole, terrible. man. See, that's what the Titans got people thinking, bro. <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Nick, what's up with you, man? Who, what's, what's um, well, I wasn't going to say the Jaguars, but uh, I wasn't going to say the Jaguars, but we already know. I knew they was going to ball out anyway, so that wasn't much of a surprise. Oh my God. Um, who surprised me was Andy Dalton, bro, how bad he played against mm-hmm. the Ravens. Um, I don't know if y'all watch, got a chance to even walk, like look at the game, bro, but he had four turnovers in the red zone. Like, he threw picks in the actual – in the end zone. Like, it, he looked so bad. And I was watching that game closely because I had a uh, couple dollars on it. Um, <laughs> but, like, it it was really – it was, like, honestly, bro, I could have went out there and we would have put up seven points at least. Hey, no, you wouldn't have. No, never, bro. Never bet your money on Andy Dalton, bro. He gonna, you going to lose. No, bro. Look, look, look. Y'all don't understand, like, how bad – I can't even think of a worse quarterback. Like Jay yeah, Cutler. Can. No. Eli he Manning. Look, no, he looked worse than Eli. He were, it's like an Eli Jay Cutler put together times six. That's how he looked. Like, bruh, I've never seen somebody look that bad in my entire life. Ever. Question. Did AJ not play that game? AJ, AJ played. AJ played. That's this, the They said the boy has zero points on fantasy. Am I look, look. Nah, he had five catches 74 yards. All right, go ahead. I don't know if I don't know if it's the Ravens even is that good or Andy Dalton that bad. I'm gonna hey, just bet my top dollar on Andy hey, Dalton. Time out, bad. my bad, nigga. I had to cut you off, bro. But he had four picks. Four yeah, picks. Four and, picks. And he fumbled in the red zone. Like they on the five yard line. I'm thinking, oh yeah, we about to get some game time. About to oh, get nah. this bread. It's and bad. he fumbled the ball, bro. Fumbled the ball. He had a quarterback rating of zero point seven. I believe it. I believe it, bro. You don't know how frustrated I was all day Sunday because of him. That's terrible. Well, go ahead, Monty. Go ahead, Monty, bro. I don't know how you going. Just, just, just in Andy's defense a little bit. I mean, no, he he played terrible. Don't don't get me wrong. That Ravens defense is real dead. Monty. I know how bad he played. I know. I'm sorry, Nick. I know he probably cost you some money. Oh. Our Ravens defense is real, but – and keep in mind, typically early in the season, offenses are – like, they, they do tend to struggle. They – they because offense, you kind of got to hit a rhythm, and you don't get that until week four, week five, week six. Early on, you're going to struggle, but, no, he did. He looked terrible. I was I was keeping my eye on that. Game. Hey, Monta, who lead the league in picks? 
Probably Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton, bro. <laughs> well, hey, come on. One. All right, come on. Four picks in week one, bro. I know a quarterback only got four in one season, bro. That's crazy. You know I ain't going to tell you name that person got, but you know what I'm saying? Hey, like, come on, bro. Go ahead, Montana, please. Bro. It always surprises me when rookies come out week one and they look like they've been playing for a minute and they just look like they belong. And the guy that surprised me, and he, he really surprised me because his name, he got to live up to the hype, T.J. Watt. He came out, had two sacks and a pick. Like, yeah. I did not expect that from him. And I, I knew he was good, And he, but he's living up to the hype right now. He's living up to the name. He came out week one and balled out. So, I got did you see? Did you see, did you see him snag that pick from the sidelines? Like, yeah, it wasn't was even, He snagged it, though. It, it looked like he was a DB. I did not think that. Uh, and he, he looked like he going to be a, a nice little prospect. But he came out week one. He, he shot. I ain't going to hold you. He shocked me more than any rookie. Any rookie. We had some rookies balling this week. Oh, yeah. Who were they? I'm done talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But look, I think my, my surprise, and I, I I don't know if it's too 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 much of a surprise because at this point, it's been a Q, QB carousel down in Houston. But Bill O'Brien is, is my surprise because of the fact that um, – you only give your boy what a quarter. That's before terrible. You, before you bench him, That's and it's terrible. week one. Oh, like, uh, Bill so O'Brien benched. He gave, he gave Savage a half, and his numbers weren't even half. that bad. His numbers weren't even that bad, bro. They weren't moving the ball though. I mean, I was about to say they were stagnant. But listen, but listen, but this, 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 this week right. one. That's what I'm saying. That's and that that was my point, Ron. Like it's look, it's week one, and and the person, the person who who's done well with it. With a team with no quarterback has been Bill O'Brien. I don't and like he's just proven more Great and more point, huh? at this point. Like you telling me that you gave up on Savage in two quarters and bench that man for the rest of the season hey. after you know in week one, bro. Like That's come on, man. Oh, well, you well, see the game. Well, Watson, Watson is the I shouldn't say for the rest of the season, but Watson is the starter for the foreseeable future. And that's yeah, just, he's starting Thursday. This, <laughs> yeah, he's starting Thursday, bro, against the Bengals. And that's just that's just wild to me because it's an overreaction first and foremost, in my opinion. And then you I mean you going up against the Jaguars defense, who was good last year, and clearly is 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 five, six times better now with the additions that they made. Like Calais Campbell was a dog. He was eating offensive line uh, all all game. Your starting left that, tackle was out holding that. out, bro. He's not playing. Like come on. Like you can't like you can't overreact like that. I guess he wanted some mobility from what I understand, but look, bro, you can't you can't overreact like that, man. And if you if you quit on somebody like that quick, I can I can see if, if Deshaun Watson is not doing well and in, in Bill O'Brien's eyes, he's gonna get he's gonna get sick of him like he got sick uh, sick of Brock Osweiler. That's just how I feel. So I was surprised by what Bill O'Brien did. Um, I'm a I'm a fan of Watson, but I just think it's too early. Like the way you the way you had things set up. You made you definitely made great points. I agree with most of everything you said because, like you said, Bill O'Brien played most of last season with no quarterback. I mean, historically, since he's been the head coach, Never had one. I think I think his best quarterback was Brian Hoyer. Maybe. I don't know. But I was gonna say, are y'all really surprised? We've seen Bill O'Brien snatch guys. Like he But does. this but I, I you right, he does. I, I didn't see them do it quickly, but the thing That's about it is it's it's week one, bro. Like we ain't even midway, we ain't even we you know what I'm saying? It's, we just I mean, started. But six exactly. sacks six sacks in one half though. I mean, I understand your O line's probably one playing half, half, some of that the second half. But does some, I, I, yeah, he's sure right, but some of that got to be on the quarterback. Six sacks in one half, bro. Some of that got to be on the QB. Got to be. And it, it may be something we didn't see. Like, it may be something we would have Savage just holding on to the rock when there was guys open. What if they were sending the heat and he just wasn't getting rid of the ball? You know what I mean? Like, right. I feel it. But the boy, Calais Cameron, had four sacks in the first half. First half, bro. Like, that's, hey. That's bad. <laughs> First half, bro. You know he got the whole protection slid to his side right after that, bro. Right. Get all that. Still ain't work. <laughs> it didn't. But um, yeah, that that was my surprise, man. It's I mean it's wild, but hey, we're moving on, I guess. Yep. Uh, did y'all have anything else to add before we moved on? Nah. Um, yeah. Shout out to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, they held on. We ain't the at the end of the show yet, man. 
What the shout outs? <laughs> well, uh, they said surprise teams, bro. They, they surprised, but they didn't really surprise me because the Sean, Look, I'm about to they, say, look at they he lost about to get three, a bro, But they, they had, they played a hell of a game, bro. I think they're gonna be they better. Than the, they they're gonna be better than the Bengals because if they don't keep playing like this, they gonna suck. So, you know what I'm saying? Third place in that division, they'd be all right. Well, here's another stat for you since you're a Cleveland guy. Ben, ben got 11 dubs on, on the Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> ben, Roethlisberger got, ben Roethlisberger got 11 dubs on Cleveland. That's more That's more times than they beat them in their whole history, bro. Y'all know that? That's, wow. <laughs> bro. Did y'all know that, bro? I didn't even know that, cuz. I didn't know that either. Come on, please. There y'all go. This is well, Cleveland. Yeah. I South think South Cleveland. You gave me a stat to bring to my coworker next time I get on my nerves. Just yeah, tell him like, did you did you know that, bro? Do but you know, that. yeah, I was to say, man, it's that's that's a wild stat, bro. I don't know any Browns fans, bro. I know a couple, and it's wild. <laughs> I know, I know one. I know one. So I would have gave up by now. So that man, you, uh, you can't give up. You ain't give up on the scans. I have basically. I have. <laughs> I'll tell you, wild. <laughs> <laughs> I always hope I hope they win, but I go in knowing we're gonna lose, so it'll be like Yeah, okay. y'all annoying, bro. You and um you and James. I, tell, I say it all the time, bro. bro. No, it's not good. it's not realistic, it's pessimistic, fool. You and um you and James being that jump like the, the kickoff just started talking about some damn we lost. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, y'all be getting on my nerves with that, bro. I mean it's funny, but it's annoying too. <laughs> I just be trying to be quiet and let things. My bad. Go. It's Ben has has more wins in Cleveland now than any Browns quarterback since 1999 in Cleveland. That's only 11 dubs. Oh my goodness! Bad. That might be worse. Say, they, 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 so no, no Cleveland quarterback since 1999 has 11 wins in Cleveland. Uh, but overall, like that's so sad. So. There you go. Go ahead, Ma. Next topic, baby. I ain't surprised. <laughs> All right. Um, my bad, my bad. I was looking at my phone. But next topic, where are we at? Teams in, in early season trouble. Um, I think we alluded to one team that's in early season trouble, but uh, maybe a couple more out there that we may be missing. Uh, Montel, I'll let you go ahead and take the, take the first stab at this one. Um, who do you think are, are one of the teams or a couple of teams that you have in mind that's in early season trouble? I got a I got a few teams actually. I'm just gonna touch on two of them though. Um, I think one of them is the San Diego Chargers, man. I looked at their schedule and they got murders row. Um, they started off 0 1 last night. I think they probably should go into panic mode. They got the Dolphins up next. After that. They got the Kansas City Chiefs, then they got the Eagles, then they got the Giants, then they got the Raiders, and they have the Broncos again, who they just lost to. So God damn. <laughs> 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 then, of course, I gotta I gotta I gotta bring up the home uh, man. I'm like I said, I'm not in panic mode. And even to me, even us starting off one and three or zero and four, I don't even personally believe that the season will be over at that point. Oh, it's over if we start off zero and four. Oh, zero and four, yeah. But if we start off one and three, I still think you can climb out of the hole and go three and three and possibly like fight your way into a possible playoff spot. You got a couple of division games you just got to win. But as everybody know, we got the Rams this weekend, which is a bad matchup for us because, like as Maul stated earlier, their defensive line. We can't run the ball, so we're probably going to be more than likely we're going to be one dimensional this week. And then Aaron you got Donald the, playing next week too. Yep, yep. You got Aaron Donald coming back, so more than likely you're going to be one dimensional. Your offense may be stagnant. After that, you got a tough Kansas City Chiefs defense who just made the Patriots look like child's play last week, and their offense is moving. So that's scary. And then after that, you got the Oakland Raiders. So like I said, you right now you're looking at one and three in the face. Or, or, or at four, so you you just can't start off like that. But like I said, I'm not in panic mode, but just being realistic with myself, probably gonna end up one and three. Uh, Nick, what's up with you, man? What's what, what's what's the surprise? Uh, what the teams in early season trouble? Um, I got three for you: the Bengals, Giants, Texans. Uh, Bengals, of course, they have Andy Dalton at quarterback. 
the league. <laughs> <laughs> he really cost you some money, bro. Oh, yeah, man. Why would man. you like, y'all, 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 you bet on Andy Dalton, I, bro? I always I, tell y'all to try to stay away from I, the division I, games anyway, in all honesty. Look, look, I... This 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 how this how this how you know I blow. I bet and gave them six points, so they couldn't they couldn't just they all they had to do was lose so by five. So you did a teaser. Nah, yeah, I did. They was, I put on my teaser to win. Um, they had to lose by less than seven. Right, you picked the spread. That's it. You picked them for the spread. I picked them to win the game. I mean, I picked them to lose the game, but not get blown out. Cause I was like, man, they gonna score. They could have won the game. They was in the red zone and just like literally just he was just giving the anybody that wanted the ball. Brandon Carr got a pick. Like, come on, bro. I don't remember last time I seen Brandon Carr get a pick in Dallas. <laughs> His first game in the Ravens, he get a pick, bro. Like, come on, bro. Not to say he trash, but I know Brandon Carr. And he ain't no pick week one guy. So man said he ain't no pick week one guy. And you, you know your boys, man. I know my boys pretty well. Yeah. He cool and all, but he's he cool, he cool. Not that type of guy. Um, but other than that, the Texans uh, O line looks like garbage, and so does the um, the Giants. I feel like they. You need think to the Giants up. are in trouble? Is that what you think? Yeah. Nah. If they oh look, bro, our, our D line murdered them, so they still got. The Eagles to play, and everybody they got the Broncos. Like it's so many teams. Uh, their that, next game is the Lions, then the Eagles, then the. Broncos. And the Lions was putting the pressure on Carson. All this of is that. not good anymore, man. Yeah, I'm Carson. I don't know who I was talking to. I was trying to tell somebody Carson ain't good, and they did not. Not no more. No, not no more. He not. He, I think it was Jimmy. I think it I was, was Jimmy. Yeah, I, he was telling me you said that. And I was like, bro, Carson ain't it no more, bro. He I lost. Think. But uh, regardless, though, like... It's a little early for that Giants pick, brother. I think it's early for the Giants, too, though. I just think that O-line really got to get together, though. Like, for real. Because Eric Flowers is getting beat left and right. But everybody know that, though. But, no. uh, He was that sorry sorry about shit. Last year, he was getting beat left. Now he getting beat left, right, up. Like, (laughs) oh, shit. (laughs) 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 Like, it was so bad, bro. Like, I was looking at my D-line like, bro, we not this good. Nobody on D-line. Charles Tapper missed all last season. He missed half a preseason, bro. He not this good. I know Charles Tapper. Like, he's solid. He's strong. He's fast. But, like, bro, he was beating. Come on, y'all. Y'all, like, come on, bro. I Only reason I say is unless, all right, I say, I put it like this. If our D-line do the same thing next week, I'll take it back, but it, which they probably won't. Uh, Giants in trouble, bro. Because Eli already not good. He he getting old. He if he get nervous behind it, he ready to throw some picks. So we gonna see though. All right, Ron, gonna... what's up? What's up with you, man? What's your teams? Uh, really, uh, really is one, but uh. The Indianapolis Colts, not even just for this season, I think for their future, they in trouble, bro. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, bro. It's because I, I might have been talking about this this season, but you got a quarterback who obviously, without him playing, they look like absolute turmoil. Like they was out there and got blasted by the Rams. The Rams barely won four games last year. And they, they got beat 46 to 9. And it was like two picks. Like the Rams broke history on, on them dudes last night. Like, I mean, last Sunday. Like, I think they said no team in NFL history has ever had two pick sixes and a safety in the same game. Uh, so, and you got Andrew Luck. I'm, I'm not sure when he's like, I, like, they've been so secretive with this man's injury. Like, I'm not even sure how bad it really is, but it's to the point where they, they, he hasn't even thrown a football all season. Like, hadn't even thrown one pass. So you got that going on. Like all it's going to take is a is a, is a re injury and somebody coming free. One of the mm-hmm. offensive alignment missing an assignment. Somebody coming blind side and knocking him. I think it was his shoulder. It's got something to do with his shoulder. But I mean, you know, there go your franchise right there. Right. You lose Andrew Luck. Something he go down. Like you, you back at square one. But I hate to be the, a dead horse with the Texans. But you know. I, I think we've expounded Ooh, enough. On them. I'm about to say you don't care. <laughs> you happy? Oh, I'm I'm sorry. That sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, nah, that I believe you. 
Um, that's that's <laughs> a good point. That's a good point with the the coach though, because uh, you know he's coming. He's supposed to be coming back in October, but seeing as how they already messed up by telling fans in the media that he should be back, he should be back and fine by week one, and now they're saying he's gonna be out a whole another month. You know, it's just a problem. Um, and it's it's crazy because the top two picks of the twenty twelve draft, one is out. One one career went downhill because of injuries, and now he's out of the league. The other person has success early on, sustained success for a couple years, and now injuries are getting to him. Um, I'm not saying that Andrew Luck career is going down the drain. No, I'm not comparing comparing him to RG3 in that sense. Uh, just the fact that injuries are playing a, a big part in their careers and has been a big part in their careers and which is wild because you just don't know the future of Andrew Luck. Um, he can't even get on the field. A lot of people think that he's a top 10 quarterback, but uh, best ability is availability, and he ain't seeing the field. <laughs> so I'm glad that's, you said that right. That's a problem. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, not I was gonna, hoping I'm not going to screw it right. up. That's only, that's only Ryan. <laughs> I know, bro. That sounded bad, too. I let my, I let my girl hit that joint. She was like, what do you even sound like right now? I, I, don't, I don't even know. What did Ryan even say, bro? I can't bro it was so bad, it's bro. But I, was, but I was loud and wrong. And I was like, where it go? How it go, Ma? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that was bad. 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 Oh, man. Nah. So, so my, my, my team in early season trouble, um, it, it actually – it's, it's the same as Montel's, honestly. It is the Redskins. Um, and I'm not I'm not a type of person who typically when week one, week one through week four, I, I think is like the biggest overreaction season is, and it's overrated because half the teams that's doing doing great and excellent in the first first month of the season, they die down pretty quickly. And it's mm-hmm. some teams that's, that starts off slow picks, picks that shit up ASAP. And You'd be like, oh my goodness, they're probably Super Bowl contender late in the year. Like the Buccaneers last year, they started off slow. They started off too slow, so they didn't get a playoff bid. They started off too slow, um, but they got hot late in the year. A lot of people were picking them as a as a sleeper team this year for you know for a fair for a legitimate reason. Um, but teams start off slow as well. But when it comes to the Redskins, like this, you can't you can't start off slow for a fourth straight year under Jay Gruden. Um, your see your 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 schedule doesn't get any easier at this point. You got the Raiders and the Chiefs right after the Rams, um, and again, what Montel said, you start off in a zero a zero and three, a zero and four, or a one and three hole. Um, you know that's just that's just something that's you can't dig your your way out of that like you did last year. Um, it's it's nothing to repeat to repeat itself like last year. It's, it's just it's just not going to happen. Um, so the Redskins are my team that's in early early season trouble. They have to find a way, and they they quite frankly have to win on Sunday against that's the Rams. Uh, you can't you can't afford an on two hole, especially with the, the the next upcoming opponents. So, um, it is a homer it is a homer pick, but I mean shoot, it's true. So, gotta <laughs> gotta deal with it. But um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and, and close it out with our with our spread picks, Ryan. I'm not. Are you are you a uh, are you a betting man, or do you just pick straight up games like when you bet your friends and stuff? Uh, I'm I can honestly say I'm really not a betting man. I only bet when I'm up, when I'm upset, and that's probably not the best thing. <laughs> it's not because you bet emotionally. You don't want to do that. Exactly. That's the only time I bet is when somebody starts talking trash, and I gotta throw some money in their face. What's up? Put some money on it. What's up? You what you gonna do? And uh, I always lose. So. <laughs> I can honestly, I'm not a, I'm not a betting man. I'm not Spence a said I always oh. lose. I, it's, it's facts. I always lose, bro. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's, I feel like the only time I've actually bet when it comes to sports and I actually won, like I bet uh, Mavericks Heat in 2011. With, that was you know, risky too. That was a risky yeah. ass bet. It was, but I made, I made it with all heart in my sleeve, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I made. It is, and I ain't, I ain't even have faith in that joint, bro. I was bet. <laughs> <laughs> like Nick and Jimbo have been eating off my money, bro. I lost every bet to them, to them dudes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. You probably won one, bro. I don't, none, bro. Zero, cuz. 
Zero. I never, I've never got money from y'all from betting ever. That's sad, bro. All right. Um. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead. We got what a few, a few marquee matchups, and obviously. Before uh, we start, this... bro, can, can I skip my pick? I don't even want to pick with my boys. Like, I see, I got my. Squad. I'm just gonna skip. I'm doing everybody else's. I'll let y'all pick that. I'm nah, because our squad up there too. You got pick, bro. You ain't yeah, gotta I, do this. Well, you ain't gotta do this. Before, you just okay, pick well, team, man. I'm gonna let y'all know now. I'm 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 never gonna say my, my team is gonna lose. So <laughs> I mean, I'm just let y'all know right now. All right, we'll give cool. reasons why y'all gonna win then. Just all you gotta do is elaborate a little quickly. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool. here we go, man. So we got a few teams. We're gonna obviously get through the NFC East games uh, first, and then we'll get to some marquee matchups of this of the week two. NFL season. Um, Cowboys at Broncos. Uh, Nick, I'll let you take... Matter of fact, you go last since you're the Cowboys fan. Um, Ryan, you go ahead and get, get this one first. Cowboys at Broncos. Um, I'm trying to get the spread for you right quick. But uh, who, do, who do you think is going to win? And you can go ahead and talk about that right quick and I'll get this, I'll get the spread for you. Uh, I definitely, definitely think it's going to be a tough game. Yeah. Um, Hell yeah. It's gonna be a grind out, but I think Cowboys probably end up winning it. Um, solely because I feel like some of the same things I was saying earlier about how the Cowboys have like this winning style that they've been playing for the last couple of seasons, and I just feel like it'll translate. But I feel like they stay true to who they are. They don't try to do nothing differently, and I feel like mm-hmm. in the end they're gonna make a couple more plays. That's going because I don't really have too much faith in Simeon, even though he looked good last night. Um, but I, I definitely take the Cowboys probably like something like 24-20, something like that. 24-20, so they covered the spread for Ryan. Um, that's a, the, the spread is two and a half. Montel and, and Nicholas. Uh, so Montel, go ahead. You got this one. Who who do you Man, got? I think this is gonna be a tough game, but it's gonna be a good game. But in in all honesty, and I'm I'm I try to pick. Without putting my heart in the picks, and I truly, truly feel like the Broncos are gonna pull it off. Reason I say it, um, that defense is still pretty good, um, but they are, they are, they are pretty vulnerable to the run. But I do think that they run the ball well. Um, also, C.J. Anderson looked pretty good last night. Like as, as uh, Ryan stated, Trevor Simeon still looked pretty nice. I think they have just enough offensively, and I think you guys struggle to pass the ball. Um, I think the Cowboys struggle to pass the ball against that that defense uh, this week, so I'm just gonna take this. It's gonna it's gonna be more so of a defensive matchup, uh, but I think that Dallas youth shows and Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders find a way to uh, kind of take advantage of those young corners. All right, um, for me, I'm going uh, Broncos plus the two and a half. Uh, the, the one thing about good teams and teams that has good tradition. Uh, regardless of inexperience at the quarterback position, they know how to play good at home. Um, mm-hmm. And the Mile High Stadium is one that has a loyal fan base and an active fan base. Like, they get at it when, when opponents are in there. So, um, with that being said, I'm taking the Broncos plus the two and a half. I think that uh, even though even though they'll, the, the Cowboys will be able to run on the, on the Broncos, um, I just think that somehow, some way, more than likely – the Broncos offense have some success against the Cowboys defense. Um, mm-hmm. So give me give me two and a half, uh, the Broncos cover. So, uh, Nicholas Sneed, you got the floor, brother. I appreciate um, that, my brother. What, what appreciate you got? That. Don't take uh, too long, bro. We got to end the show soon. No, I, no, definitely. I got us winning um, only because, one, I'm not a big fan of Trevor Simeon. I'm not sure how good he really is, if at all. Um, and they – now nah, he's pretty good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but and also the Broncos are terrible at not terrible. They're not as good as they could be as um, stopping the run. And what do we love to do? Run the ball. I feel like Trevor Simeon won't get as many chances to be on the field, so they won't probably get in a good rhythm and probably until like the second half, just like Eli and them. Um, and I think I just think he's just gonna grind it out, play at arm by the defense, keep it keep it over the top, and then. We gonna win a close one. I feel like the score will probably be like we gonna cover the spread. I put it like that. Okay, so you taking you taking Cowboys minus two and a half. I got you. Matter of fact, I got us. I got us winning by ten points. Okay, so you got the Cowboys covering the spread. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on to the Redskins and Rams. 
Um, Montel, you got you got the uh, you got the last word on this one. Nick, you got the first word, brother. Um, Redskins at Rams. Rams are two and a half point favorites. Uh, who do you got? Hey, believe it or not, I, look... I said you got. I said you got the last word. Nick got the floor first. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh... I'm actually going to take the skins in this one, man. I think y'all going to bounce back. Um, I don't see y'all really starting 0-2. The Rams, they did play good against Scott Tozine and Frank Gore. Who can't beat them? So I feel like Kirk bounced back a little bit. It's going to be a close one, but I got this. I got the skins covering the spread. Y'all might win by one. Miss, okay. miss, I miss extra points. So you, so you basically got the skins straight up then? Yeah. Okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. Ryan, what's up with you, man? How do you feel about the Redskins at Rams? Rams is at Rams. I think it's going to be another tough game. I really don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game either. Um, but I'm I'm definitely going to take the Skins um, solely because of what, some of what Nick said. I, I don't think the Redskins can afford to start off 0-2, especially with the schedule given uh, ahead after the Rams. So I think um, Redskins is making their plays in that game. I say something like, you know, 1916, something like 1916, that. 1916, okay. All right, well, for me, I'm taking the Redskins as well for the same reason that both y'all talked about. We can't afford it on to a hole. And I also think that the Rams' week one um, performance will be overrated simply for the fact of who they played and, you know, just the, the, the shock of the score, the final score, um, put a lot of fear in, in the Redskins fans' hearts. Um, so that's, that's definitely something that goes in favor of the Rams, but I think it's, it's just overrated. So with that being said, I do think the Redskins cover plus the two and a half. Um, and they do win. Obviously I stated earlier, I had the Redskins at this point, 51, 49, um, in terms of, uh, win percentage in my, in my opinion. So it's, it's not just necessarily 50, 50. So got the Redskins covering and winning, um, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? We got the Lions and Giants next. Oh, I didn't even get to go, cuz. Got more too. Oh, my bad. See, and this, see, you know what? That's my mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. You got the floor, brother. Nah, but believe it or not, I had changed my pick right before the show. I, I got the Rams. I, I initially had the Rams. No, initially I had the Rams winning this game because Kurt typically struggles against good defense, but I do think that the Rams' offense is going to struggle a little bit against our defense. I think we are as more we a lot faster defensively, man. Zach Brown was a great pickup, uh, but I I do think that Skins played sloppy ball last week. Sloppy ball. They didn't play winning football at all. I don't I don't see that happening again this week. As y'all stated, we need this W. Um, and like I, I try not to pick with emotion, but I think we're gonna put it off. I think we're gonna win by like ten points. In all honesty, it's gonna be an uncomfortable game, but we're gonna still win by ten. Okay, so Montel covers the spread as well. So it's a clean sweep for the uh, the the Redskins, which I'm very happy to hear. <laughs> the Lions and Giants is up next. Um, so the Lions, I'll, I'll let I'll let Montel Montel you could take the floor with this one, so I while I find the spread right quick. But who do you got in the Lions at Giants? Lions winning that ain't covering. I ain't even gonna hold you, bro. Uh, Matt Stafford looked good. He's worth every <laughs> penny that they paid him. Worth Giants is a four-point favorite. Oh, I don't know why. Um, but that, <laughs> that Lions defense is also underrated. And we've been going over that since last year. That defense is pretty good. Um, and I think Matt Stafford is going to put up the points that's that's, that's necessary to, to win the game. Okay. Uh, Ron, how you feel about this game? This is Lions-Giants. Yeah, Lions at Giants. Whew. It's another good game, bro. You picked all good games, bro. I'm, I'm going to say, honestly, I'm going to say, uh, seems like I'm picking all the MC East teams these days, but I'm definitely going to pick the Giants to win this game. I think a uh, bounce back game for them after losing a tough one. And, uh, well, but, you know, tough one. That, that game was boring. Cowboys and Giants was boring, bro. But I think uh, it'll definitely be, it'll be an exciting game because I think it'll be I think it'll be a, a little shootout, just a little bit, but um, I got the Giants pulling that one out. Odell coming back, so I'm picking okay. them. Um, Nick, Nick, who you got? Um, I got the Giants. I mean, not the Giants. I got the Lions. 
with a last second touchdown to oh, win the okay, game. So they covering. I got you. All right. I got. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I feel like um, it's going to be a good game. It's going to be like that uh, Lions Redskins game last year. Um, it's going to be one of those where Matt Stafford put a job together and show that he's worth all that bread like he did on what you call on uh on Sunday. But um, yeah. It should be lit, man. Y'all should, y'all should stay tuned. All right. Well, I got the Giants winning, but uh, the Lions covering the four-point spread. Um, for me, I just feel like last year they, they did face off um, late in the year, but when they faced off, um, Matt Stafford had a broken finger or a broken hand or something like that and it interrupted, you know, the, the I mean, it, it messed up his, his his entire game, honestly, and it was late. So it was in the winter. Um, and don't nobody like throwing the ball and handling the ball in the winter. So with that being said, it's another, it's a week, it's a week two matchup. It's not going to be freezing cold like it was back then. And Matt Stafford is fully healthy at this point. So with that being said, I got the, I got the Giants winning, but, uh, Lions coming close. And with that being said, we are going to move on to the Eagles and Chiefs. Let's make this one quick uh, because we got some people that's ready to go or that needs to go. Um, Eagles and Chiefs. Uh, Montel, who you got first? I'm with the Chiefs. I think they're gonna win that game pretty handily too. Um, uh, the spread is four and a half. Yeah, no, they gonna cover that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I got the Chiefs winning that game. Probably not in blowout fashion, but they gonna win by at least two touchdowns to me. Ooh, I guess that's okay. a blowout. I guess that's yeah. a blowout. Okay, Nick, what's up with you? I got the Chiefs. Uh, Alex Smith, another four TDs. Put on the board. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I got the same thing. Honestly, I ain't gonna lie to you. I got I got the Chiefs minus four and a half. Eagles don't handle handle they don't handle the noise well in the crowd and the atmosphere at, at, don't have a at, second at Arrowhead. Um, don't have a second. So Bond, they fold. Be hurt. Tyreek Hill about to go off. They they fold in Arrowhead. Uh, so Chiefs cover four and a half. Um, Ryan, what's up with you? Who you got? Who you got the Eagles at Chiefs? Definitely going to Chiefs. They don't really lose too many games in Arrowhead. Like you said, fans look crazy loud in there. Eagles DBs is short. Darby out for a little bit. I'm definitely going Chiefs. All right, all right. Um, moving on to the Falcons and Packers. Uh, Packers at the Falcons is what I should have said. Atlanta is two and a half point favorites. Um, for me, I am going with Atlanta. Um, they get off to a two and zero start. Uh, so, hey man, it's what is this Sunday night football too? Yeah, it's gonna be a good game. I hopefully I can watch it at the bar if I got some money. <laughs> but um yeah so Packers at Falcons I got the Falcons two and a half points they cover uh what say you Mr Ryan I'm going Packers and Rodgers zero and one beat them in the playoffs who beat Falcons beat the Packers in the playoffs right last year yeah they yeah Falcons up. beat the Packers yeah, 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 yeah they yeah, was yeah. in the Super Bowl a rod a rod zero and one so um I'm definitely going Packers on that one shootout definitely think it's gonna oh, be a shootout okay okay, okay. Uh, Monte, what's up with you? I'm going Falcons, man. They they are early season like football team. They start off good every season, and I think they're gonna be in the Georgia Dome, the new Georgia Dome this week. And I think the Packers they typically start off slow. A Rod kind of looks well, but anything else don't really click around them until like later on in the season. That's when they start to pick up. So I'm gonna go with the Falcons. All right, um, what's up with you, Nick? What you got? Oh, man, A-Rod, baby. I feel like he going to spoil that little homecoming they got in the new stadium. They're going to start off on one in there, bro, because the way the Falcons look against the Bears defense, bro, oh, my God, they look atrocious. Uh, the Bears defense is good. You can't I was about that. to say, the Bears defense not slouch. No oh, you, oh, you know I know, but oh, that's not the, <laughs> that ain't the point, though. Uh, I feel like the Falcons, they, they're going to regress, like I said, and I don't think they're going to be a playoff team, so they're going to lose to this playoff team in Green Bay coming up. All right. Um, let's get to the prime time, the, the, the big matchup that everybody wants to see. You know, I, every, all the All-Stars going to it, all the uh, celebrities and everything, the, the Titans at the Jaguars. Everybody <laughs> want to see Mariota and, and Derrick Henry. All right, all right. And Marco, right, and Marco right, Murray right. and company. And Brian and Rock. <laughs> and company. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, Titans at the Jaguars. Um, my, uh, Nick, I'll let you go first with this one. Ryan, you got the last word. Uh, who, who do you got with uh, Titans at the Jaguars? 
Uh, Tennessee is a one and a half point favorite too. I'm going Jacksonville, baby. Of course. What does that mean? Jacksonville defense looked too good last week to be like, come on, bro. Ten sacks in the game. They finna be a problem. Cause let's go. Jacksonville put them on the board. Cover it. Montel, what's up with you? Who you got? Man, man, I don't even want to hurt your heart, bro. It don't got much. It don't have much to do with last week, but. I like that Jacksonville defense, man. I really think they're going to come out. and It's a division game, tough division game. They're going to come out and kind of punch the Titans in the mouth. Um, I got them winning. It's going to be a close game. though. I got them winning by about three points. Close. All right. Okay. I got the Titans covering. Oh, no, they're, they're favorite. My bad. Uh, one and a half points. So, yeah, I got yeah I got the Titans covering, honestly. Um, they they covered the spread one and a half. Uh, they win by a close game. Um, I, I think that. According to Ryan, like he saw the game, obviously a Titans fan, he saw that they they played him close, uh, the Raiders that was, so I and I also think that they have a better O line than the the Texans do. Um, so with that being said, I do think that this this situation is not the same in terms of who the Jaguars are facing off against. So with that being said, I think the Titans go on the road and they get the W against the Jaguars. Um, so yeah, Titans get get back to one and one, Jaguars at one and one. So Ryan, you got the last word on this one, man. How you boys? How you boys gonna do on Sunday? Well, I'm glad you pointed it out. That ten sacks game is not gonna be happening today. We got a much better offensive line than than the Houston. Secondly, statement game, <laughs> division game at the same time. This is uh same team that put us uh, not put us out, but ended our playoff hopes and also ended our quarterback season. So I feel like we gonna have a little bit of edge coming into the game. Because trust and believe, this is what I know that it's been talked about about how they did end our playoff run. Like, well, you know, you beat one in the division last year, have you beat Jacksonville? But we lost. And I feel like it's a lot of built up animosity coming out, and I feel like we get the dub. Not right. not sure the, the points because I'm not sure exactly what Jacksonville team we're gonna be playing tomorrow. But we'll, you know, we're not tomorrow Sunday. We'll see. All right, and we're gonna end it off with this last this last matchup, the Vikings at the Steelers. Um, and we're done with we're done with these picks for this week. Uh, Nick, you got the first word on this one. Vikings at the Steelers. Pittsburgh is a six and a half point favorite. Um, I got Stephon Diggs going off again on Joe Hayden, man. Let's uh, trip. So nah, honestly, I got I got the Vikings winning though. Um, Steelers didn't look too good versus. You got the Vikings the- winning or covering? Winning. Okay, sir. Uh, this is this is a trap game for the Steelers. Early trap game that they will lose. Um, and they just I felt like this would be good for them to lose now and then lose later on in the season. I just feel like their defense is about to be too real. You know what I'm saying for an early game. Seeing what happened to the Saints, they look atrocious versus them boys. And just the way like the way um the Steelers look. They just look bad. It's ben, ben look slow and fat. Like, I feel like they're going to... Hey, Nick OT, bro. I just feel like they're going to get after him for real, and it's going to be a long game for him. And Le'Veon, he, um, he trying to get back in the game shape. He, he ain't look too good. So I feel like you got two out-of-shape dudes in the backfield. I'm going to go ahead and give it up to him. And Sam looked too good the other day. Sam looked too good. But y'all okay. go ahead and y'all think. Okay, um, so uh, what's the name? I, did I ask? Did I ask you, Montel? My bad. I, I was looking at something on my phone. <laughs> I got distracted. Did I ask you? Hey, quick. I, I agree with Nick though. I feel like the Vikings are gonna get out the big band. I think that defense is pretty stout, and I think they are another team who starts off seasons pretty well. Sam Bradford looked sharp last season, starting off, and he looked sharp starting off this season. You got Dalvin Cook running wild. So yeah, crazy. Vikings gonna pull this one off just because the early season. I feel like later on in the season when the Steelers get the click, and that's not gonna be a team you wanna see, but taking the Vikings to somebody. Okay, Ryan, and uh what about you, man? we we'll, uh who, who do you got with this one? Vikings at the Steelers. What I will say is I'm not gonna put too much stock in the Sam Bradford. Um they played against the Saints. Don't don't get me wrong, dude look good. Uh, they did everything he's supposed to do. Uh, he barely was any any completions at all, but um, I do like the Vikings defense. I do like the fact that Dalvin was getting off. Um, but at the end of the day, it all revolves back to it was the Saints. Like, the Saints have one of the worst defenses in the NFL. But uh, I don't know how 
bad the Steelers defense is going to be looking this year. But, I mean, I really do think uh, Vikings do have enough to beat them. I'm not really sure. Did Xavier Rose get injured in the Vikings game? Because I didn't really see him finish the game. Do you know? Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't see anything about it, him being injured. Uh, I know AB had 11 catches one eight two last week, so I hope he's ready. I hope he got his <laughs> running. Hope he got his running shoes on. But I'm gonna go Steelers for that one. Sorry. All right. Um. Well, I am going Steelers as well. But the Vikings do cover the six and a half. Um. It'll be a close game. Uh. I, I think that. Uh, the, the Vikings defense is going to be the reason why they're still in it throughout the throughout the game, and I I, I really don't trust Sam Bradford yet. Um, he's not a person. I haven't seen him to be the person that wins you games. Uh, he'll he's definitely accurate. I, I won't knock him for his accuracy, but um, I don't think he goes above and beyond. He's Alex Smith as well. Like he he definitely prefers the check down um, from his from his his reputation. So I mean I just I don't trust him yet. We'll see. We'll see where it goes with with Sam Bradford, but um, I think the defense keeps them in the game. They'll be able to run somewhat against the Steelers. Uh, to it, one of their guys is lost for the season. One of their defensive linemen that they just resigned to a big deal contract. Um, so you know it affects their front seven. Um, so I, yeah, I'm going. I'm going with the Steelers to win it at home, defend their home turf. But uh, Vikings keep it close. So plus six and a half for the Vikings. Um, with that being said, look. Please, 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 fantasy gods, help me win in week two so I can have a season later down the road. I want to play in the playoffs, and I want to win so I can brag and talk trash to uh, everybody that's in the league. So please, fantasy gods, answer my prayer, and I appreciate you for listening, fantasy gods. Um, before we get out of here, is there anything that you guys want to say before we dip? The only thing is, you brought up fantasy. I don't know what's going on with Josh Doxon, but I need to see him on the field. Ryan Grant had a pretty good game, but you got to play Josh Doxon. I don't know what's going on. I was about to ask, how many snaps oh, did he play? He only play, he played 20 snaps. I actually wrote an article about that today. I'll, I'll send it in the group chat. But um, he wrote he, he played 20 snaps, and um, it's, it's basically a coach's decision to um, right. he say he has to he has to earn he has to earn his, earn his way back on the field. Um, and and just to sum it up, he elaborated. They like Ryan that. Grant, though, man. They they like Ryan Grant in Ashburn. Yeah, they I don't do. Know. What the hell is going on? He's not that guy. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, everybody has a opinion. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else, Ryan, Nick, y'all good? I got one, man. Shout out to Jalen Smith for coming back. and uh, Jalen Smith looked good. That's he's coming back from that injury for real. I'm looking at, like, the boy look amazing. Some had seven tackles, forced fumble, only played 36 snaps out of 50 something. He was flying, though. He was flying. Was out there, all in, bro. Um, I'm glad he's playing next to Sean Lee. That's going to be a good look for us. Uh, shout out to the boy. Congratulations coming back. That's it for real. All right. All right. Well done, sir. Um, no more <laughs> about the Cowboys, but uh, well done. Um, all right, cool. So, again, we appreciate y'all for listening. Uh, Looking forward to hearing y'all. Oh, I said looking forward to hearing y'all. Looking forward to talking to y'all again next week. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the show. And I'd bet the house if y'all were if I were y'all or y'all were me, I'd bet the house on every single pick that I made because I'm not gonna be wrong. Okay, so just bet the house. And if if I lose, don't don't come after me. Okay. About to say, I hope you got the backup mortgage. I was about to say, you, it, about to say, you, you about to lose somebody they crib, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, I man, I'm about to put some money down, morning. man. I'm I want to know this season, man. I had a good week last week. It wasn't much. It wasn't much money, but it was it was good enough to keep me going, so I could bet a little bit bigger. You so, started um, Josh Dox. What are you talking about? I'm talking about boy. I'm talking boy. I'm talking about the spreads. I'm betting money. I ain't talking about fantasy. Don't matter. You said you're not wrong. You started Josh Dox and you were wrong. Well, I, I, all right. You know what? We moving on. Okay, we're done with this. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, appreciate y'all for listening, man. We will catch y'all again next week. Peace.